Oh, oh man. man. What the? Dude, you're not gonna believe this. I got another pimple. And I have that date tonight. Bro, don't sweat it. Pimples, they build character. <laughs> I know, I know. I just don't get it though. How come you never get any? I mean, we eat the same food. We live in the same house. We're literally identical twins. I mean, you do do that weird intermittent fasting thing, but yeah, that, that is true. But to this point, the evidence and the correlation, it's just not clear. Oh, hold up, hold, let, me, let me see this pimple. Dude, it's not a pimple. Oh, it's not? Thank God. It's a wrinkle. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, I figured we uh, switch things up a little bit. Alrighty then. We're always talking about how different health interventions, such as fasting, can get us healthy from the inside out at that cellular and metabolic level. Well, what about the outside? Like something we can actually see, touch, smell and taste. Do those last two at your own discretion. Let's dig into fasting's impact on the biggest organ we have our skin. So in the next 13 minutes and 47 seconds, we'll be diving in on the present day data available, highlighting fasting's role in skin function, wound healing, growth, aging, and disease. And of course, we'll be touching on some tips and tricks to optimize your skin health along the way. Now, also want to say, before we get started, and after looking at all of the data that is currently available on the topic, it is evident that we need some more research, as the majority of studies to date have been performed in animal models. That being said, the show must go on, or the zit popping must go on. Yeah, first, a little skin crash course, our skin. As you are now aware, the skin is the largest organ we have, covering a impressive surface area of approximately two square meters and accounting for an astonishing 20% of our total body weight. <sighs> Whoa. Thus, it's kind of important. It plays that oh-so-critical role of being our barrier from, you know, everything not on the inside, while playing a very active role in protecting against chemical, physical, and microbial insults. Now, when we dig a little deeper, we'll find that the skin is comprised of two main layers. An upper layer, the epidermis, and a lower layer, the dermis. And don't worry, I know two layers wasn't enough, and that's why we have five additional layers that comprise that upper layer, the epidermis. This brings me to my first observation. We humans are pretty much an onion. We got multiple layers, and we're always crying. Then under the dermis, we have the hypodermis, which is a layer of loose connective tissue that functions as insulation from cold temperatures, being a shock absorbent, as well as a nutrient and energy storing reservoir. And the hypodermis is thickest in a couple of key areas, like the palms of our hands, the soles of our feet, and our badonkadonk, you know, where we need some extra padding. Our skin also harbors a fair share of both the innate and adaptive immune cells, which makes sense because that's one of the main entry points into our body. And if you aren't already showing your skin some love, let me tell you why this often overlooked, many times neglected organ deserves your attention. Not only does it act as our physical barrier from the external world to our internal world, it's also an immune system hub, a key sensory organ, facilitating things such as pain, touch, temperature, and pressure. It is vital in synthesizing one of the key vitamins for health, vitamin D, and it provides the ever so important toxin elimination through sweat. And might I add, it is also pretty damn resilient too. 
giving us a front row seat into how capable we as humans, we as an organism are at healing ourselves. Funny how we take this amazingness for granted. Today, I am grateful for my epidermis. Yeah, much better. So in conclusion, our skin is important. Now, let's ask how can we do our part and help it help us, as well as see if the magical health intervention of a fasting protocol can continue its longevity boosting run. Let's take a look, fasting on skin function. Now, before we get started, I want to make sure we delineate what CR is and what IF is. CR is calorie restriction, meaning eating chronically less calories over an extended period of time. While IF, intermittent fasting, is eating normal caloric intake, but just doing it in a structured feeding window. I do this because the research that we'll be reviewing jumps back and forth between the two. And even though in many cases they have similar longevity promoting mechanisms, they are different. All that being said, an intermittent fasting protocol has shown some promise in improving skin function and health. In one study, a six month fasting intervention displayed an enhanced metabolic profile in the dermises or that lower level in the mice subjects, showing an increase in epidermis stem cells, which is interesting because we already know from this video how fasting can re-stimulate dormant stem cells in the intestines. It also displayed an increase in interfollicular stem cells, which is believed to be responsible for maintaining fur and increasing growth rates and retention of hair. Maybe if I enhance my fasting protocol, the production team won't uh, have to give me my daily scalp massages. Nah, you know what? We're gonna keep it just to be safe. In addition, fasting and calorie restriction have shown the ability to decrease the dermal adipocyte reservoir or fat stores, expand dermal blood vessels, and increase vascular endothelial growth factor, all of which enable the skin to maintain thermal homeostasis under the conditions of restricted energy. Pretty cool. I mean, I definitely didn't know all this. There is also data suggesting that it may help with skin-induced irritations. How? By elevating antioxidant levels and downregulating genes that are associated with tissue destruction. Hmm, speaking of destruction, how does it affect wound healing? Okay, so here we have some conflicting information, but that's okay. It just means, as I said earlier, we need some more focused research in the area. But here's what we got in one mouse model, Short-term fasting for four consecutive days repeated every two weeks over the span of two months was associated in a increase in wound healing when compared to the controls. According to the authors, fasting enhanced wound healing through its upregulation of macrophage activity. Now, that right there was an example of intermittent fasting. I say this because the next studies look at wound healing as it pertains to calorie restriction. And these studies suggest that a calorie restriction protocol may slow down wound healing. One attributing the slowdown to a CR associated decrease in P5C, a precursor molecule associated with the suppression of a growth hormone IGF-1 which is critical in stimulating collagen synthesis. And I think it is important here again to note that intermittent fasting is not calorie restriction. And we need some more research to really tease out what is going on. Another thing that we don't wanna forget here is fasting's immune boosting effects. In that aforementioned fasting and immune system breakdown, it was shown that short-term fasting can enhance macrophage activity promote the process of wound healing, and even protect against some infections. Pretty interesting. But how does it fare when we're talking disease of the skin? Enter eczema, psoriasis, and the teen fan favorite, acne. Ah! The common theme with these three is their association with chronic inflammation which we know has a critical role in pretty much every non-acute health situation that we face. 
And with that in mind, forms of dietary restriction have shown some influence in the progression of such skin diseases. One study reported an improvement in chronic inflammatory dermatosis and atopic dermatitis by implementing an intermittent fasting protocol for just two weeks. Other studies have indicated a decrease in psoriasis breakouts following calorie restriction. The observation here was a decrease in pro-inflammatory clusters of immune cells and an increase in anti-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-4, resulting in an overall dampening of inflammation. And in the case of acne, a few studies have shown a strong association between a fasting type diet and acne in adults and youths. Uh oh, what was that word? Youths. Did you say youths? Yeah, two youths. Highlighting that during a period of calorie restriction, sebum levels, or the oily waxy substance formed in the sebaceous gland, were reduced by 40% which influenced the degree of acne sensitivity in the subjects. Now, these observations in this study were made during a severe calorie restriction, less than 100 calories per day, which isn't recommended unless you're under medical supervision, and especially not recommended in growing teens. And we can't leave this section unless we talk about one of the most prevalent skin diseases out there skin cancer. A 2007 study that looked into the impacts of a 20% dietary restriction on tumor-prone mice five days a week found that the fasting protocol stimulated a decrease in tumor-promoting pathways and a downregulation of the genes related to said pathways. This was explained by the significant decrease in IGF-1 levels associated with calorie restriction, suggesting a potential anti-carcinogenic effect. Also, let's not forget this video here, where we take a deep dive into how a fasting mimetic diet plus vitamin C combo helps protect against one of the most prevalent forms of skin cancer on the market, melanoma while also improving our cellular response to treatments such as chemotherapy. All in all, I would say pretty pro disease fighting effects. What do you think, Chuck Norris? Hmm. But what does it do against that long-term nuisance? Aging, in particular, skin aging. Wrinkles, where? Just like anything else in aging, skin aging is complex. It is a multifactorial process characterized by a decrease in collagen levels, loss of fibrillin biostructures, and broken elastin, or that part of the hypodermis that we touched on earlier. Now, we know from previous studies that intermittent fasting and calorie restriction have been linked to enhancement of lifespan and decreased aging. But can it do the same for skin aging? In a classic 1995 study that looked at the effects of a long-term 60% caloric restriction on different aging markers in rodent skin, found that chronic calorie restriction decreased the glycation rates in skin proteins, resulting in the reduction of these age-related metabolites in collagen, thus showing a similar age slowdown effect that we've seen in many other parts of the body. Damn fasting! you continue to step up that longevity game. Now, let's remember, the data on humans is light. Further, larger, high-quality studies are needed to help fill in the aforementioned gaps. But from the data available, it seems that a intermittent fasting or time-restricted feeding protocol has much more of an upside rather than downside when we're talking about improving our day-to-day -day skin health and longevity. So if you are looking for a place to get started, identifying a 10 hour window that you can consistently designate as your feeding window each and every day is a good first step to start your fasting or time restricted feeding journey. And if you are looking for a step-by-step -step guide into identifying the perfect feeding window that fits for you, your lifestyle and your current situation, check out this video here. And that's what we got. As always, let me know what comments, questions, any random thoughts you have down below. And above all, whoa, what the hell is this? 
Production team, quick, the pimple popper. Catch you next week. Come, 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 come.